is good, right? Today we are diving into some of the rarest WWE action figures that are in my entire collection. I took a look around the room and I wanted to gather them up here today for a little bit of a history lesson. We're going to break down all these figures, what they're kind of going for in the aftermarket. Maybe you knew about these, maybe you didn't know about these, but these are probably some of the rarest, if not the rarest figures that you will see across my entire collection. Now there are more than these. These are not obviously every single one of them. There are more. And really, I talk about this all the time on the channel. There is no bigger mystery other than the aftermarket of the WWE action figures. You can never really, I don't know, sometimes I guess, sometimes the writing's on the wall. Sometimes you can tell when something's going to go up in, in market value. But sometimes you look at a figure and you're like, I don't know, whatever. And then a few months pass by, maybe a year goes by, and then that figure has skyrocketed in price. And it's just like, what in the hell is going on right here? So sometimes you can scale it, sometimes you can't. But today we're going to dive into these figures, talk about them, all the ins and outs, man. Let's start things off with a chase figure. We have the chase. Chase Elite 63 Golden Standard Shelton Benjamin. Now this is a figure I was very excited for when it was first released and this Shelton Benjamin actually is a part of the first wave that included interchangeable hands and I have a I have a trivia question and whoever can answer it you win. You win down in the comment section below. What was the first WWE Mattel Elite to come with interchangeable hands? They implemented the interchangeable hand system in Elite Series 63. What was the first Elite figure from WWE Mattel to include interchangeable hands? Let me know down in the comment section below what you think and I'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. But this Elite 63 Shelton Benjamin is a great figure. You know, it is kind of, you know, it's in the Ruthless Aggression era towards the end there and it is very nice. Great figure. This is actually one of the first sets that also included a chase figure. So Elite 63, what a what a phenomenal set. What a what a historical set. You have Elite you have Elite 63 Gold Standard Shelton. What a great figure and this one's kind of hard to come by. The regular edition is not nearly as sought after and not nearly as high priced as the chase figure right here, which is usually the case anyway. Next up, we have have a Toys R Us exclusive. This is the Network Spotlight TJP or TJ Perkins Cruiserweight Champion figure. And I actually, a lot of people love this figure. I'm actually not the biggest fan of this figure. I thought they did some weird design choices right here. Hated this new arm mold where you have the rotational bicep right here or the cutout arm. I hated this arm mold. It was absolute trash. I feel like his hands get a bit loose. I don't hate the formula necessarily, but what I do hate is this shin cut with no boot cut. That is just illegal to me. That is just absolutely illegal. You have this weird shin cut here. I don't know, man. And he has no ankle rocker. It's it's not a bad figure. It has some unique things going on with it. I was just never a fan. But this is a Toys R Us exclusive, which is going to add to that exclusivity of it. It is a network spotlight figure, so you're going to run into that. It's just one of those guys, man. One of those guys. TJP. A figure you honestly kind of forget about, but came with the cool medal, came with the cruiserweight title, and this is pretty cool. I I, I don't know. It, it's a cool figure in itself, but I, I don't know. The execution for me kind of gets on my nerves. It doesn't have that real easy feel to it in hand, you know, so let's shut the hell up. Let's get into it next. We do have the Attitude Era or Best of Attitude Era, Elite Chris Jericho. Now, this is a figure I could see getting re-released if he ever came back to WWE, and certainly I would hope he will one day because we're going to get so many good figures. Imagine, oh my god, Chris Jericho is one of those guys that I need an ultimate of. I need some, I need, there's so many damn moments they can make as an ultimate. They can make a box set of Chris Jericho. There's so many moments and different things, but Raw is Jericho, one of my favorite eras of Chris Jericho's career. Kind of one of my favorite, you know, just a, a, a time when I was just getting into wrestling is about the time that he came in to WWE or WWF as a young kid there and I have always enjoyed this figure but it goes for kind of a crazy price man it goes for a crazy price especially men on card well all these figures men on card go for more than what they're worth loose but this is a, a great one great gear great shirt great head sculpt I love that best of attitude era Jericho and it has my favorite some of my favorite kick pads ever with the Jericho on the side it's just so clean next up we have possibly the rarest figure in this video it's between this and maybe one other figure but we have the Chase Elite 91 RVD. One of my favorite figures that Mattel's ever done is the Elite 91 Elite RVD. I love the Elite 91 RVD. I think it's so good. This is the canceled Chase unreleased version that never hit the mass market. And this was actually a gift to me by my man Pro underscore Wrestling. A huge shout out to my man over there for hooking me up with this figure. It's just a great gift right here to the channel. I really appreciate this figure. It's a great one. I never thought I'd see the day that I'd own this and it's such a good, such a good figure. Unfortunately, did not hit the mass. Didn't hit the masses, man, but this RVD figure is pretty damn good. I appreciate this one. Next up, we do have the All-Star CM Punk. Now, this figure right here, as you know, is being re-released. Essentially, I, I know the value of it. It doesn't have the original head sculpt on it, but from the neck down, this figure is pretty much getting re-released in the Defining Moments line, which is Ringside, Ringside Collectibles exclusive. But that's going to be the Pipe Bomb Punk, and there's a few different things about that figure that are different, but this is originally the All-Stars Punk that came in a two-pack Elite set with Stone Cold Steve Austin. I have, had, I have head-swapped it since. I love the original head sculpt on there, the long hair with the beard. I just 
love that look of CM Punk. And this is a great looking figure. It poses around and feels pretty well in hand, you know? Like, look at that. He doesn't have the damn Elite One Rey Mysterio syndrome where his legs rocking back and forth. It is a great one, and I really like the, the chest hair on there and everything. It's a, just a really detailed figure, especially for the time, because this is around the time of Elite One th through Series 3. So there was, you know, they didn't have a big catalog of figures, and this one is just so well executed for that time period. And the head sculpt originally was really good. I know the, the value of this figure is pretty much going to come downhill now because it is being re-released as a defining moments, but don't be shocked if they re-release the original All-Stars Punk in this gear in like a Top Talents or something like that. I could easily see them running it back with the original All-Stars Punk with that original head sculpt with the tattoos off and different things like that because the pipe bomb is different than this. It's not the same as this. It is going to look like this, but it is a little bit different. So there is that one. But we also have another CM Punk, which is going to be the Elite 20. Now, when I tell you, if you have any original CM Punk and you want any value out of it whatsoever, if you don't collect for value, that's fine. If you don't want to sell it, that's fine too. But this figure, if I had any CM Punk Elite and I wanted value out of it, I would sell it right now. I would sell it right now. They are re-releasing SES Punk. We're essentially seeing a re-release of All-Stars Punk in the Defining Moments Pipe Bomb Punk era there. We are getting more and more. We have more new punks coming out. They're going to re-release every previous punk. We're all, we're even seeing the Elite 16 re-release as an Ultimate Edition. I'm telling you, man, you want to go ahead and take care of yourself, you better move those CM Punks right now. I'm, tell I'm just telling you, man, I think the Ringside Exclusive ECW Punk I think the Elite 6, the Elite 1, all those figures are not safe. You are not safe, Brad. They are going to re-release those with ease because they can pump them out faster because they are not a new gear. So I, I know we're going to get a ton of CM Punks. We're going to get more Ultimates, more Elites. They're going to they're gonna do it up. But just for the sake of the video, I'm telling you, man, Elite 20 CM Punk, this is going to be re-released. But for now, it is pretty hot. It's got, you know, the Cubs gear, whatever you want to say. It looks pretty damn good. I love this head sculpt originally. Uh. It's just a really good figure overall. I really like the Elite 20 CM Punk. I don't know if it's my favorite Punk of all time, but it is certainly up there. It's a good one. Next up, we have the Cassius Ono Elite, which is so good. This was a, was it not a collector's edition? I want to say like Elite 70 or Elite 71 or something like that. This was the collector's edition, and it comes out with this knockout artist shirt, entrance coat deal. It even has the knockout artist jersey underneath with the arm sleeves. It is a beast, and it has this really unique boot mold that we had never seen before. It's a really, really good figure, and it has a great light. I mean, my God, they did a fantastic job on this figure. It is essentially a just standout figure. It poses around well. Anybody that's a Cassius Ono fan or a Chris Hero fan, you know how good this figure is. It's such a beast. And this was also a gift as well. So I appreciate all the people that have gifted these figures over the years, man. This is a beast. I, I find myself picking this guy up. He's really underrated. He doesn't really have an ab crunch because of the jersey, but I really like this figure. It has a really unique aesthetic and it kind of reminds you, there's so many characters out there that, and the Mattel WWE line has ran so long that you forget that you even have some of these guys out there in the wild. And they have such a vast roster of different talent and figures. They've made so many, it's ridiculous. Next up, we have a Build-A-Figure, and it's going to be the Build-A-Figure J.J. Dillon, which was a flashback Walmart exclusive, I do believe, from a basic wave that you had to build all the pieces. Now, this set, I remember finding this set and building him on a random day. I want to say it was right when the retros were coming out. I think Series 1 of the retros was hitting right about the same time, and I remember buying those pretty close together. If my memory serves me correctly, I could be wrong, but I really dig the purple suit, and I do have the glasses as well, but they are in my glasses bag, but the purple suit's very unique. What a great figure, and also, we have a couple other suited bodies here that are really rare as well. You have the suited Triple H with a ponytail that's COO. I think this was, was this not a mail away? I want to say this was a mail away of some kind, or was it like a Walgreens exclusive or something like that? I can't remember off the top of the dome, but you can see the different suited bodies. I've always thought that, you know, this torso works for more muscular guys, and this works for more regular guys or regular managers and stuff. Like, this torso, not these legs, but this torso should work for your Cody Rhodes and your, you know, your different guys like that. But this torso should work for your regular managers that maybe, like, you know, your Michael Coles of the world, things of that nature. But I think that, you know, the legs, it's the determinant height. And uh, I think these legs would be too tall for a Cody Rhodes or something. But both of these figures are pretty damn rare, man. I mean, they're going to run you about a hundred bucks loose just for these suited bodies right here. And it's just crazy. It's just a suited figure, but you guys, people know they go nuts for suited figures, which is another thing I want to add here. The final figure is a gift from my man, Ty, and I appreciate him for this. This uh, Mail Away, Toys R Us exclusive, I do believe. Vince McMahon figure is so nice, man. The color of this suit, this kind of off gray white here, is so damn nice, and it'll be a damn cold day in hell before we ever get any sort of Vince McMahon relic in action figure form ever again. This is a great one, man. This is a great, perfect rendition of Vince, Vince, you know, Mr. McMahon, and I know that they could... Imagine the ultimates and the stuff that they could make of him, obviously. Not gonna happen anymore, but the Vince McMahon figure 
figure is very good. And again, I mean, it's essentially this figure repainted with a different head sculpt, right? Or this, I think this one came first. This one would come later. And the tie has the details. Again, I've seen people remove the head sculpt of this Vince and put a William Regal head sculpt on there. It is such a damn good fix up. So yeah, I think it's the Elite 45 William Regal head sculpt. You put it on this body. Oh my goodness, Brad, that's an action figure surgery. But unfortunately, I don't have multiples. But this Vince is one you could easily use in your setups and stuff. So it's always been one that I've, I've really enjoyed as an action figure. It just, it can really bring the setups to life there. But that is all of the rare action figures that I wanted to talk about here today, man. There's so many good ones out there. And I know that, you know, some, some figures out there are rarer than others. Again, in terms of value, I think the RVD would be the one that is the most rare in this video. But all of these figures loose are going to run you 60 plus bucks on the aftermarket. Some up in the $100 range, some a little higher, a little lower, give or take. But at the end of the day, you know, uh, the, these figures are pretty damn cool in their own ways. All of them have very unique things about them that I can always appreciate, but some of them do get on my damn nerves. But if you guys want the answer to the trivia question, what was the first ever WWE Elite Mattel figure that had interchangeable hands? That is going to be the SummerSlam Matt Hardy V1 figure. It came with the interchangeable V1 hands. I remember that being a big deal. I remember that like it was yesterday, and now we're so many years later, it's just crazy. Now interchangeable hands are a thing. I know they're loose most of the time, which is annoying. I need to fix that, but I don't know. Pretty cool figure nonetheless, man, but I enjoyed getting on here and shooting the shish about some random figures that we're going to be, you know, that we we got in the past, man. They're pretty damn good, but I want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon members and a huge shout out to Polly D for signing up just the other day, man. I appreciate the, the, the man over there, man. Thank you so much for your patronage and for becoming an MDT supporter, man. I appreciate all you fellas, of course, as always, but I think that is going to wrap today's video, man. I'd like to know what you think down below. Do you own any of these figures? Have you had the privilege or the honor to own any of these? You can let me know down in the comment section below, but I'm getting the hell out, man. I'll, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one. I'll catch you guys later. See you next time, and peace out.